Ever wondered how data is organized in databases? How one piece of information relates to another? Well, this is where functional dependency comes in. It's a fundamental concept in database systems that describes the relationship between attributes in a relation or in simpler terms, a table. It tells us how the value of one attribute determines the value of another attribute in the same table. We denote this as X, Y, where X and Y are sets of attributes. So, if you know the value of X, you can determine the value of Y. X is called the determinant, the independent attribute set. Y, on the other hand, is the dependent attribute set. Its values are determined by the determinant. So, to put it simply, functional dependency is all about how one attribute or a set of attributes can uniquely determine another attribute. Let's dive into an example to understand functional dependency a little better. Imagine we have a database table or relation called employee. This table has three attributes, employee ID, employee name, and department. Now, in this employee relation, we say that employee ID determines employee name. This is denoted as employee ID, employee name. But what does that mean exactly? Well, it means that if you know an employee's ID, you can uniquely determine that employee's name. In other words, no two employees can have the same ID but different names. If they have the same ID, they must have the same name. This is our functional dependency. It's like having a unique key that opens a specific door. Once you have the key, or in our case, the employee ID, you know exactly which door it opens, or again, in our case, which employee name it corresponds to. This relationship is what we call a functional dependency. The employee ID is the determinant. It determines the value of another attribute, employee name. The employee name is the dependent. Its value is determined by the value of employee ID. Let's consider a scenario. Suppose we have two employees, Alice and Bob. Alice's employee D is one, and Bob's employee D is two. As per our functional dependency, Alice's employee ID of one determines Alice's name, and Bob's employee D of two determines Bob's name. If we encounter another employee in our table with the employee ID of one, we know without a doubt, based on our functional dependency, that this must be Alice. The same goes for Bob with an employee ID of two. That's the power of functional dependency. It ensures consistency and uniqueness within our database. It helps us maintain the integrity of our data by preventing potential mix-ups and confusions. It's like a rule that our data must follow, and it's extremely useful in the world of databases. So in our employee relation, knowing an employee ID gives us the specific employee's name. That in essence is functional dependency. Now, functional dependency isn't just a simple one-to-one -one concept, it can also be transitive. This statement brings us to the heart of our discussion today. Transitivity in functional dependency. Transitivity is a property of functional dependency that allows an attribute to determine another attribute, not directly, but through an intermediate attribute. This might sound a bit complex, but let's break it down with an example. Imagine we have a table of employees where each employee has a unique identifier, a department they work in, and each department is associated with a specific location. In this scenario, we have two functional dependencies. The employee ID determines the department, and the department determines the location. Now here's where transitivity comes into play. Even though employee ID does not directly determine location, it does so indirectly through the department. So, by the transitive property of functional dependency, we can say that employee ID, location. This essentially means that if you know an employee's ID, you can find out their location, albeit via their department. The transitive property helps us understand the deeper connections between attributes, connections that might not be immediately apparent. This understanding can be crucial when designing and optimizing databases, as it allows us to predict and control how changes in one attribute might affect others. However, it's important to remember that transitivity and functional dependency is not always present or even desirable. Sometimes having a direct relationship between attributes can lead to data anomalies and redundancy. That's why understanding and managing these relationships is such a critical part of database design. So to sum up, Transitivity and functional dependency is a property that allows an attribute to determine another attribute indirectly through a third attribute. This concept can be incredibly useful in understanding and managing complex relationships within databases. This chain of relationships where one attribute can determine another through a middleman is known as transitivity and functional dependency.
Now that we've got a grasp on transitivity, let's move on to another important concept, the closure of attribute sets. This term might seem daunting at first, but it's actually quite simple once you break it down. The closure of an attribute set, denoted as X+, plus, is essentially a collection of all attributes that are functionally determined by the set X. In other words, it's the set of all attributes that can be deduced solely by knowing the values of the attributes in X. So, how does this work? Well, let's consider a simple example. Suppose we have a relation R with attributes A, B, C, D, E. We know that the functional dependencies are A, B, B, to C, and D. E. Now let's say we want to find the closure of attribute set AD, which we'll denote as AD+. We start by including all the attributes in our original set, which are A and D. Then we look at our functional dependencies to see what additional attributes these can determine. From AB, we can add B to our closure. From B to C, we can add C and from D, E, we can add E. So our closure AD plus would be A, B, C, D, E. But what if we only had A? What would be the closure of A plus? Well, starting with A, we can determine B from A, B, and then from B, Y, C, we can determine C. So the closure of A plus would be A, B, C. This concept of closure is incredibly useful in database design. It helps us understand the reach of a set of attributes, showing us exactly what information we can derive from a given set. This can be vital when trying to minimize redundancy and dependency in a database as it allows us to identify potential problems and address them effectively. So, the closure of an attribute set is essentially the reach of that set in terms of what it can determine. So, the next time you're looking at a database, remember to consider the closure of attribute sets. It's a nifty tool that can help ensure your database is as efficient and well-structured as possible. So, we've covered the basics of functional dependency, but how does it fit into the bigger picture of database design? Functional dependency is like the secret source in a well-structured database. It's an element that, when correctly applied, can add consistency and reliability to the data stored. But how exactly? Well, let's dive right in. The first thing functional dependency does is to play a significant role in normalization. Now, normalization is a process that breaks down a database into smaller, well-structured relations. This is done to avoid data redundancy and maintain data integrity. By understanding functional dependencies, we can accurately identify the attributes that should belong together in a relation and those that should be separated. Let's take an example. Imagine a database that stores information about authors and their books. If we keep all this data in one table, we might find ourselves repeating the author's details for every book they've written. Not very efficient, right? This is where functional dependencies come in handy. We can use them to break down the data into two tables, one for authors and one for books. The author's details become the determinant in the author's table, and the book details are the dependent in the book's table. And voila, we've just minimized redundancy. Functional dependencies also help maintain data integrity. They ensure that the data in a database remains accurate and consistent, thereby avoiding anomalies. For instance, if we update the author's name in the author's table, we don't have to worry about updating it in multiple places in the books table. This is because the author's name is functionally dependent on the author's ID, which remains consistent. So you see, understanding functional dependencies is not just about theory. It's about practical application. It's about designing databases that are efficient and reliable. It's about ensuring data integrity and minimizing redundancy. It's about creating systems that meet our data needs while avoiding errors. With a solid understanding of functional dependencies, we can design efficient, reliable database systems that meet our data needs while minimizing errors and redundancies. So, we've unwrapped the concept of functional dependency today. A fundamental concept in database systems, it describes how the value of one attribute or a set of attributes determines the value of another attribute within the same relation. Remember the notation X, Y, X is our determinant or independent attribute set, while Y is our dependent attribute set. We've also explored the concept of transitivity in functional dependency, a principle that allows us to infer an indirect relationship between attributes. Don't forget the closure of attribute sets, denoted by X P plus, representing all attributes that are functionally determined by X. And of course, we've seen how functional dependency plays a key role in database design through the process of normalization. It aids us in identifying and eliminating data anomalies, 
ensuring data integrity within the database. And that's a wrap on functional dependency, a key concept that helps us understand how data is organized and related in databases.